Hi everyone, welcome back to another um, fun tutorial and I'm doing another Christmas bracelet and I'm doing it in these colors that's why I didn't finish this sample piece that I showed on iBeat View and on my new blog that I just want you all to know that I have a new blog and it's also linked to my uh, YouTube channel so if you click right on the um, picture on my YouTube where you subscribe to my channel up in the far right corner you'll see I have uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube there or Google and blog anyway um, I don't quite have a name for this yet I haven't quite thought of something and by the time I post this video it'll have a name <laughs> I'm sure of it so you can make um, a bracelet you can make a choker you can make a necklace I'm not sure how well it would make a necklace um, because it doesn't have any bendage in it whatsoever so you can't bend this to curve it you know for a necklace so um, the only thing you could really do for this is a choker you can also use this for a, a hair barrette if you wanted to make a hair barrette you can make it long enough and glue it on so for this I used 80 seed beads and I'm using Mayuki uh, Silverline Ruby I'm using Super Duo in an opaque white and I'm using um, a Toho 15-0 uh, silver lined crystal seed bead and I'm also going to use a few 11-0's um, in this project here now for the clasp I don't know if I'm going to use a cut button and I don't know if I'm going to use a toggle I, I just I'm unsure at this moment as to what I want to use so we'll cross that bridge when we get to it um, if you want to use a toggle use a toggle if you want to use a cut button or a piggy bead a piggy bead is a little smaller than these because these are 14 millimeter cut buttons and the piggy beads I think are like 8 millimeters so they're much smaller and I don't know how secure your clasp will be with an 8 millimeter bead but you can always try but please don't yell at me because um, you lost your bracelet because you used a piggy bead piggy beads are really cute though I'm going to make something eventually when I order some of those. Now, you're going to use a size 10 beading needle. That's all you're going to need. And you're going to use 6 pound fire line. And I don't know how much you're going to need because like, all I made was this little sample piece. But I wanted to try it first. And I usually, when I have an idea in my head, I do a sample piece. And if it turns out, then I'm happy. Like, I know the ends are going to turn out if I do it this way. So that's why I really don't know. Um, I might even keep this and put a jump ring in there and put a closure on it. So we'll see. We'll see what we do. So for starters, all you're going to do is use your 8-0s for right now. Whoops. So let me get some dumped out here for you. And, of course, we got to do um, the famous ladder stitch. Um, that's how I started this. I, I was aiming for something else, which I, <laughs> I have a really bad habit of doing that. I, I, I'm trying to make something else, and I totally don't end up making what I have in my head. Close to what I wanted, but not quite. So, anyways, you're going to pick up two eightos on your needle like that. Okay, let me move these out of the way so they're not interfering in any way. Bring those down and leave yourself a good six inch tail. Now you're just going to take your needle and run your needle back through that very first bead that you put on to form a ladder stitch. And you might want to hold your beads like that. Okay. Now all I'm going to do is reinforce this very first one, so I'm just going to go through these two beads again, reinforcing. I, I don't have a very long piece of fire line hooked on here, so... And now you want to exit out of your last bead here, because you're going to add another one. Now try to keep your ladder stitch nice and tight together. So pick up another one, make a circle, and continue going through this bead, keeping it pulled nice and tight, as tight as you can keep it.
another bead, make a circle, go through this again, like so, and another circle. Now before I finish the length of this, um, this piece, and as you can see, um, it will all straighten out nicely, even though you did only one, one stitch. And right now it's going to be a, a little crooked, but that's why I'm insisting that you keep it pulled very tight so that your beads don't get all wonky and crazy on you. Okay, so just continue to do this for the length. I am going to go back, I'm going to go and decide what kind of closure I want to use just because I want to make this the proper length. So you're going to keep doing this to your length, leaving room for your closure. I'm probably going to use a toggle. Okay, and if I can fit a jump ring in here, which I believe I can fit a jump ring in here, then I'm just going to finish my end off like this and add jump rings here and put uh, the closures on them there. So that's what I'm going to use, guys. I'm going to use a toggle and two jump rings. So continue to do this your whole length, and I'll come back and show you what to do next. So enjoy doing your ladder stitch. I'll be back. Okay, so I have completed the length that I need right here. So this will be um, the length of my bracelet. Now, all you're going to do is I'm going to use two colors of Super Duos. I'm going to see what the red and the white look like. Um, see how pretty that looks. I'm going to pick up one white Super Duo. I'm exiting out of the top or top bottom doesn't really matter. I'm exiting out of the 8-0 and I'm going to bring this up a wee bit more. Picking up a Super Duo, I'm going to go right back into that same bead and I'm going to sit the Super Duo there. I'm going to pick up another Super Duo and I'm going to go right back up into that exact same bead. So I have two Super Duos sitting wonky like that. Now you're going to put your needle over into the next 8 -o. and now I'm going to pick up a red Super Duo and I'm going to go back into that same 8 -o, like that and I'm going to pick up another red Super Duo and I'm going to go right back into that same 8 -o, like this. Then I'm going to bring my needle over into the next 8 -o, Pulling nice and tight, picking up one white Super Duo, going back into the same 8 -0. pick up another white, and back into the same 8 -0. Okay, and then you're going to pick up one red, or whatever color you're using. Oopsies, first we need to go into the 8 -0 before we pick up our Super Duo. <coughs> Let me just get this off of my needle. So let me get over into the next 8 0. Whoopsies. Crappy. Like that. And this is where it's probably going to really tighten up your um, funky line there of your 8 0. So I'm picking up red right now and I'm going right back into my 8 0. Bringing my needle into the next one. I'm not skipping any 8-0s. Now I'm picking up alternate colors, one red <coughs> and one white. It might even look good picking up a, a red, white, white, red, red, white kind of thing. You know, alternator that way. Okay, and then you're going to go back into the next hole. Now we're picking up two red. One on each side. So that's all you're going to do now is just keep adding one Super Duo going on each end of your, um, this will all straighten out when we get our 50 nose in here. It'll look really pretty. So continue to do that for the whole length of your bracelet and when you're done I will come back and show you what to do next. I'll be back. Okay guys, so I'm at the end of my bracelet here. As you can see, I've got 
um, all the colors in here and I'm actually going to call this candy cane lane bracelet because to me it kind of looks like a candy cane it's really pretty with the red and the white so I'm done with my super duos so I'm just going to get them out of my face for now move them out of the way I'm at the end here where I have put my last two super duos on here and my tail is also here um, and you're coming out of this uh, 8 right here so all you're going to do is slip into the bottom hole of that super duo so just now we're going to work back towards our beadwork and I'm just going to keep pulling my thread through here and I've decided I'm going to use a toggle and I have these really pretty star ones so I'm just going to use one of those it's a small one it's not a big toggle now oops we need some 15 O's probably don't need that much but <laughs> dump it anyways so now we're going to stick a 15 O we're going to pick up one 15 on our needle this tiny little 15 and you're going to go right through the bottom of the next super duo stay in the bottom um, holes Pick up another 15 and go into the next super duo but staying into the bottom hole and pulling my thread and putting a 15 o between each super duo. And that's all I'm doing all the way. 15 and into the super duo. And And you will see that it'll start straightening up and stiffening up as you go through. And you can see, if you use thread that you can see, you can kind of see my thread a little bit in here. But you can see the way the Super Duo's sitting, so you know it's not twisted. So when you're putting your 15 O's in between, make sure your Super Duo's not completely twisted. And you leave it like that, because I'm not sure what's going to happen or what it's going to look like so and I don't want to find out <laughs> so that's it I'm gonna let you guys finish this one side so when you get one side done I'll come back and I'm gonna show you what to do on the end there and I am just going to use uh, the toggle with jump rings actually hopefully I can fit a jump well we ain't got there yet so I'm not gonna confuse you just finish putting your 15 nose between and stop when you get to the end because we're going to add our other piece and then I'll be back. Okay guys, I'm at the end here now and well, I've done one side only. I'm at the other end here where I'm going to do um, this here piece so we can put our toggle bar in that 8 there. So I've picked up 111 -0. This is where your 11 O's will come in handy if you're using 11 O. So I picked up 11 O and 8 O and 11 O. And I'm just going to skip right across over, as soon as I pick up my needle here, into the bottom loop of the next Super Duo here. Now, you kind of want to reinforce this. So all you're going to do is drop back down into the 8 O, like so. Sorry. Go back into that same 8 0 at the beginning there. Go back up in the one side of your. So, sorry, hang on. Gotta love when you answer your phone and they just hang up. And it's an 800 number, so it's probably a telemarketer. So, you're going to uh, go back into your Super Duo like this and then go through this entire group of three again and you can reinforce it again and I would say with six pound fire line I would definitely go one more time so back into this super duo back into the Edo back into this super duo and into these three beads again through your 8 and through your 11 and now you're going to go and do 
your other side by putting your 15 O's in between here. And I'd make sure I'm going to have room to fit a jump ring in that 8 O, and I definitely will. So, as you can see, I've had to tie on thread, and I tied on thread the same way as I did on the uh, other bracelet. So I'm just going to continue on this side now, putting my 15 O's on the bottom part of the uh, Super Duos. And I'll be back. Okay, so now I have completed putting my 15 O's on the bottom holes of all the Super Duos. And as you can see, it's starting to shape up nicely and lay nice and flat. And here I'm going to show you again how to put your your 11 o your 8 o seed bead and your 11 o so you're coming out of the bottom hole of that super duo just go over into the next bottom hole of that super duo and pull that and now you're going to go back down into that first 8 o where your super duos are maybe and you're going to reinforce what you just did. Wow. I don't think it should have been that tight. but Okay. So we're just placing those there. And then you're going to come up and go through the Super Duo. And back through all those beads again. And do the same thing again. So we've gone twice around. love poking myself with the needle. Sometimes when I'm, I'm holding my needle in my hand like this, sometimes I go to grab and this jabs right into my thumb. And I don't know if I'm the only one that's ever done that, but I'll tell you that hurts like a son of a bitch. And then you pull it out and it bleeds. So yeah, beautiful. Now, you're just going to go back down through the 8 again because now you're done reinforcing this tail. So I'm going to go through the 8 Oopsies. Like so. Okay. Now just go through the bottom of your Super Duo like this. Okay, pull your thread through there and now exit towards your beadwork. So make sure you're on the right side of that bottom duo, super duo, so you're exiting towards your beadwork like that. Now, let's have a look and see if our jump rings will fit in our 8-0s that we just reinforced. So. Let me get some pliers and let me see what jump ring we'll use. Well, I could use a 5mm or I could use a 6mm. And I don't know how strong the 6mm are. Those are pretty big. Those look more like an 8mm. Okay, well, we'll just try this. Well, that looks like a big jump ring, but it is a six millimeter. Okay, let's get it. Oopsie. Drop the phone. Oopsies. All right, let me get a closure out of here. I love this star closure. And I got these from um, the craft store here in craft store beat store let's pray it goes in and it does so there you go look how easy peasy that is actually I really don't like this thin jump ring sorry I'm not going to use this um I think I'm going to use um, a five millimeter maybe. 
Maybe those ones are stronger. And I don't know. They don't look it. I'll try. Let's see if this one's stronger. Oh, it's a little stronger. Oopsies. All right. Now you're just going to put on one piece of your toggle. See? And close it up. Oops. Butter fingers today. As long as you rub the metals together, you know it's going to be good and closed. Look, that's too closed. It's crossed over. Uh, we'll get her closed yet. And it's still not closed. Do you believe that? There we go. So how do you like that? Oh, guess what? Our toggle's sitting like this. Guess what that means? It means we got to add another jump ring in there. So I'm just going to try my bracelet on my wrist because I never really tried it on with a toggle. So I'm just going to check to see if it's going to fit, and it's not. So I'm going to use a longer jump ring. So I'm going to pull out two of those. Add an extra length, a little bit of length to my bracelet. And we want our toggle to always sit flat. So let's open this up. I wonder if this oval jump ring will fit in an 8 -o. Oh, it does. Okay, I'm going to use ovals. You know me and my ovals. And let's give her a nice tight close. I have a new order that I got from Fire Mountain Gems of oval jump rings. I just haven't put them away in that case yet. So as I was saying before with oval jump rings, sometimes it's beneficial to just take your pliers and squeeze them down to make sure they're they're both flush here. So this larger oval jump ring fits on this jump ring or this 80 perfectly. Like does it or doesn't it? Oh, maybe it doesn't. You know what? It doesn't fit. It doesn't sit nice. It's pulling this. So, epic fail, Ruby. <laughs> I tried. So, can't use an oval jump ring in here. But now I can't even get it out of the bead. And the last thing I want to do is break my bead, so I'm going to cut it off. Don't ask me how I got it on, but I can't get it off now. Let's see if I can pull it off. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Well, back to this cheapy old... you got to use a round jump ring. You know me, I wanted to use oval. <coughs> Let's give it a close up. Again. Alright. Now we'll put an oval jump ring on. Pick up our toggle. And add our oval to this one. Because we want our toggle always lay flat and the only reason I'm using the oval is because my bracelet's too short for me and I'm going to give it a little squishy down 
like that. Now let me see. Now our toggle will lay nice and flat, see? Just by adding that extra jump ring in there. Got a mess. Like that. See? I don't even know if it'll fit now. I did add an extra length with the ovals. And it should fit with the oval in that one. So that's how it's fitting. Now you're just going to continue. I want to show you guys what I've been doing, how I've been getting this done quick. Okay. I'm exiting up at the top hole here like this. So I'm keeping all my threads like this. Holding this. So all I do is, because my thread is quite long on my, need, on my needle, so I pick up one 50 no, exit through the super duo, pick up another 50 no, and I don't pull my thread all the way through until I get about four or five of them on. And this is how I've been doing it. It just makes it much quicker. And then give them a pull. And then your beads are set in place like that. See how easy? Show you again. So I pick up one, pull my needle, enough thread to grab another bead, and I just keep doing it. Watch your thread doesn't get twisted or wrapped around any of your super duos. It's just quicker than trying to pull your thread through. So I've just pulled my thread through six. And that's how easy it is. So you're going to do that all the way around your bracelet. You're going to come up through here. Go back. You're going to have to go back down. So you're exiting this way outward on your super duo. So when you get here, go all the way around. Come back down into your 8-0 up into here, exit over here, and exit this way. So you're exiting towards your beadwork. So you can put these 15, or wait, uh, sorry. Uh, I'll show you when we get there, okay? I'll, I'll do this and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've reached the end here and I wanted to show you guys how to get into your hole the right way. So all you're going to do is you're exiting out of your super duo on the end here. Just drop down into the bottom hole if you can like that out of that super duo go through your 8 like that and go between the red and the white so go between and go out exit outward away from your beadwork in that bottom hole of this super duo here now you're just going to exit into your super duo this way and now you're going to continue putting your 50 nose in and I'll be back to show you the bracelet when it's all done Well, there it is, all finished, and it fits absolutely perfect. It looks good with the star. Um, it lays nice and flat. It's very smooth because it's just um, soft seed and soft um, super duos and 15 O's. So it's there's no crystals, there's no sharp edges. And it's not a flexible bracelet to make into a necklace. I can tell you that. So if you wanted to make this, it would definitely have to be a choker as it wouldn't work for, um, <laughs> for a bent necklace, that's for sure. It goes around this way perfectly, but you can't curve it because of the 15 O's in here. Unless you take the 15 O's out, I don't know what you would do. Maybe pull it all in here. Um, 
Not sure. I'd have to play with it, but I don't have time to play with it because I have more bracelets to make. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And like I said, I'm going to call this Candy Cane Lane bracelet. So I'll see you all soon on the next video. Give me a big thumbs up and talk to you soon. Bye.